Hello, and welcome back to the Console Definitive Edition Guide for Seven Days to Die, the 2016 port. I'm Middlebro, and today we are going over the ranged weapons of Seven Days to Die on this version. And uh, we have uh, lots of options here, so let's uh, start off with our archery. First, you have your right old bow that you get at the start of the game, and you have stone arrows, which are made with uh, uh, stones and wooden feathers, iron arrows, which are made uh, with uh, iron arrowheads and wooden feathers, steel arrows, which are made with steel tips, and then flaming arrows uh, are your fire versions, which uh, take some gunpowder. Flaming arrows uh, take steel, gunpowder, cloth, fragments, and tallow. Keep in mind you have to use steel arrow for this. For your crossbow, this is uh, the difference between this is you have to draw the bow back and the crossbow you, can, you just manually reload. You have iron crossbow bolts which are the same as uh, the iron arrows, steel crossbow bolts which are the same as regular steel arrows, and then you have explosive bolts. Explosive bolts are uh, steel arrowheads, uh, gunpowder, one duct tape, one wood, and a feather. So a little bit more expensive. Well, let's just pull these out real quick. And one thing I do want to say is, and this also applies to the PC version of the game, if you make a new bow and say like you have a you have a Iron arrows load into it. Let me just show here with the bow. This is loaded with stone arrows. It does 22.5 damage to enemies. And say, like, you're wondering why your new bow is not doing as much damage, like if you have load iron arrows or even steel. The damage that the bow does is dependent on your type of ammunition. So, uh, basically, you're going to be doing less damage with uh, the stone arrows and uh, then iron arrows and then same thing with steel arrows. It's important to know this, because, uh, like, your weapon's not actually worse, uh, it may not actually be worse, it's just uh, doing a... Uh, you're just uh, not having the right ammo type loaded. Just be aware of that. The same thing goes for crossbow. Crossbow does this all, and I have explosive bolts loaded. The thing with, <laughs> with explosive and flaming uh, ammo types on these is, let me just load up the well, the steel arrow tips. With this, <laughs> they are doing the exact same damage, but the but you know, here's your regular kind of crossbow bolt. And then let me just load up a, an explosive bolt. You do explosive damage. Keep in mind this is uh, not very good against blocks. It's just good for doing you know, zombies. And then with... You know, here's your regular old uh, bow. You know, you can just zoom in a little bit and... And then here's your flaming arrows. You know, got a nice little flame particle effect here. If I had a zombie around, I would show you, but basically flaming arrows would do fire damage against uh, zombies on impact. You basically become like a arranged uh, burnt zombie. So yeah, I think that kind of covers the foes uh, fairly well. Just place these back in, in their little uh, slots here, real quick for you guys. And next, uh, while I'm doing this, I'm going to start going over the rocket launcher, because you do have your explosive crossbow bolts. Your, your rocket launcher, and this, you know, takes rockets. There's only one type of rocket, unlike the uh, PC version. And one thing that is important to note is with the rocket launcher, 
Unlike the bow and the crossbow and all the other weapons in the game, this does not have any damage perks associated with it. But it's uh, just a good thing to note. Let's just pull out the rocket launcher here. You get your. You can just show you the little kaboom. Not too bad against weaker blocks, but it's mostly a zombie killer. Let's just blow up a car. Ooh, I think I took out the gas pump with it. A little bit of extra explosion for you guys. Yeah, you can see against stronger blocks. I think these are only like 100 HP. These are like 200 HP, so not the strongest thing in the world, but I kind of wish it was more uh, more damaging against blocks and zombies. Just kind of wreak some havoc on them. One more shot for you. Fun stuff there. You fire a rocket, go kaboom. Just run over here real quick. Done with a rocket launcher, playtime. And now we're going to be moving on to your handguns. There's two handguns in this version. You got the, my personal favorite uh, handgun, the 44 Magnum. And the, uh, but you also got the Breda uh, handgun. We'll go over the Breda real quick. Nice little reload, it's your just ni your nice little handgun. And you know, fire fairly quickly. Not the fastest thing in the world, but it's uh, but it can get the job done. And you got the 44 Magnum, it you know, looks very similar to the very popular uh, uh, 44 Magnum and Dirty Harry. I personally love this version of the 44 Magnum. It's it got just a very nice, satisfying boom. And it's like a very nice reload. And it's like unfortunately uh, they kind of took away this just really nice crisp boom with the 44 Magnum uh, later on in the PC version, which they kept it. But anyways, so go over your perks real quick with with the handguns. You got your basic pistol action skill, you level it up by shooting, and one thing that is important to note here is, uh, it may seem like just firing it off into the, into the air, it does, uh, some levels, it's probably about towards the, the end a little bit, but no, it's actually hitting blocks. You can see that it's moved a little bit. Mine's a higher level, but that's one thing to know. You know, damaging blocks increases your skill. Then you got the outlaw, which is uh, increases your uh, weapon damage with the handguns, both the M9 and the uh, the 44 Magnum, um, by 11.3 percent per rank. I think it's uh, just rounded up from. 11.25% or all zone as uh, 11 and a quarter. And then you got Deadshot. Deadshot is literally for making your dismemberment chance to you know, popping off arms and the head and even legs to go up. It goes up by 5% every rank. And so it's like really good for the 44 Magnum. It's really good for popping heads. It's a very nice uh, weapon. And I think that's about it for the handguns. Let's just hand in the 44 Magnum, and then we're going to go over the shotguns. There are three shotguns in the game. You have your... You have the first gun you can actually craft in the game without any schematics or whatsoever, the blunderbuss. It takes uh, some forged iron, some short iron pipes, and some uh, and some duct tape, and some glue, and a little bit of wood. If you get a forge early on, it's fairly easy to use. Some people say the blunderbuss sucks, you know, but it's actually 
what specializes in is just getting right up in their faces and in the zombie faces and it'll actually do oh, it'll actually do a lot of damage it's just that the the spread is very inconsistent but show you with the you, you can see it and it's like of course there is a very lengthy reload it's a single shot but it's a very easy gun to get your hands on the uh the ammo only takes a small stone, a gunpowder, and a and paper, as versus to with regular ammo it takes. For nine millimeter, it takes uh, one bullet casing, one gunpowder, and a bullet tip. For shotgun shells, it's the same except you swap the bullet tips out for buckshot. And then with seven six twos, you do a bullet casing, three gunpowder, and a bullet tip. Then you get your you know, two pump action shotguns. You got the sawed off here and the regular. The sawed off shotgun is a you know, obviously a sawed off version. It has a shorter, it has a different stock. Let's just I'll just go into the assembly here real quick for you. It has a shotgun short stock and has a, a short shotgun barrel, which is different. Very nice reload. Then you got the regular pump action shotgun, which is longer range and is a very nice uh, you know, shotgun. It's like I don't mind using either one of these. They are both pretty good, but I would recommend just going with the the regular shotgun once you have the parts here you know, to do it. You, know, you have on the you have the regular shotgun stock and the shotgun long barrel. The receiver and the perch are the same across these two. So that's about it for shotguns aside from its perks. And I will note with the blunderbusses uh, and regular guns, gunsmithing is does not judge the uh, blunderbuss crafting level. It only really it says it has crafting quality, but really. Basically, you just get your gun smithing up to access the ammo crafting, like 9mm rounds, which is uh, locked at 10, level 10, 44 magnums, or the next one is the is gunsmithing 25 for shotgun shells, 7.62s are gunsmithing 30, and then 44 magnums are the highest level at at level 40, and they also, but 44 magnums and 7.62s take the, the same amount of gunpowder. That's one thing to note. So yeah, that's about it for the shotgun. I keep forgetting, but shotguns, you get, you got your shotgun skill, and with the action skills, you get up to plus 28% damage. And then you got their associated perks who which uh, will provide an additional 56.3 percent damage so you're going up to uh, 84 percent damage so not quite double but you're, you're still getting a hefty damage bonus and then you got splatter gun for shotguns which is which is uh, basically the same as the outlaw. It increases your dismemberment chance by five percent per each ring, giving you more chances to a higher chance to blow off heads and limbs with it. And the associated damage perk with the shotguns is boomstick. So with all that being said, let's go into let's go into the rifle category. Just place you there. So we have. The AK-47, the submachine gun, the sniper rifle, and the hunting rifle. Come back here, you. You got usually you'll come across the hunting rifle first uh, in your journey, and you will. And the funny thing is, it's actually got the highest damage per 7.62 in the game, but it's got the drawback of only one shot. Then you got the sniper rifle. 
Then you got the submachine gun. And almost forgot some 762s. Turn on the light for you guys. And So the hunting rifle, your typical bolt action, single shot rifle. It's really good for hunting you if you, especially if you get crit, it'll sneak damage. And it's really nice, you know. The sniper rifle, it does, let's just see here, like, hunting rifle here is doing level 112, 112 damage. This is with maxed out perks and level 600. The sniper rifle does a little bit less at 103 damage, but still pretty. Incredible, but it's a faster firing version. Nice little reload on it, nice military sniper. Then you got the SMG, which is based off the MP5, and it is a it's a nine millimeter. This is the weakest out of the rifle category, and it's. 43 and a half damage at max level. It's not too bad. It's pretty good for its fire rate. You got a nice little reload. It's, but it's really good at stunning enemies really quickly because of its fire rate. It does really well. And then I'd say you got the arguably the best weapon out of the bunch for generally use the the AK in the rifle category. This does 105 damage per shot, which is more than the sniper rifle, ironically enough. And not as much as the hunting rifle. But there is some recoil to it. Don't want to go up a full out full auto with it. But you got a nice reload animation. Not the fanciest, but it is it'll do its job. But yeah, you got the AK there, and it's like, I feel personally the AK should be doing less damage than the sniper rifle, considering it's fully automatic and it's got got 30 rounds in the magazine. It's, you know, it's just a very one of those, but the rifles do have, uh, do have, uh, their action skill, you know, but they don't have a dismemberment chance increaser like Splatter Gun or the Outlaw. It just has better lead than dead, and it just makes them really powerful and really nice stuff. I'd say rifles are overall really good. And what I was saying with the blunderbuss is like uh, weapon smithing actually makes. Uh, Uh, is what determines it. It's a little unusual in that you think it'd be kind of gunsmithing, but it's it's not. Then for a final ranged weapon, you know, a lot of people wouldn't really consider it to be a, a weapon. It's the nail gun. It's the it's the good old fashioned. It's like uh, people for, kind of tend to forget, but this is actually a ranged weapon you can use. It has its nice little reload, and it's like. It's not the... You can't ADS with it, you can only hip fire. It's semi-auto, but it's like... You, know, you really feel like uh, embracing the... Uh, you know, the uh, oh, nail guns will be... The... Uh, uh, the they'll be the uh, best weapon in the zombie apocalypse. Here you go. It's not the best at its damage. And I don't think instruction tools that can affects its damage actually it is only doing seven and a half damage but the the upside is it's like with a nail gun you can you can just craft nails in a forge and it's only one clay and iron and you get it. so it's like as long as you can keep this thing repaired you can you got yourself a nice weapon so this is gonna conclude the the weapons uh, video for for this version of Seven Days to Die, and I really hope you enjoyed, and even like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day, everybody.